Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's the year 2023, when TF2 is at its best and not riddled with bots and cheaters. Vile still makes original content for the game, the competitive scene is exponentially growing from widespread support, and Team Fortress 2 is the most played game on Steam. That is what I would say if my delusional thoughts came true. Unfortunately, that is far from the truth, with bots and cheaters being more common and casual than AIDS and opioid addicts. But, that's not what you care about. Regardless of how bad playing TF2 is, you want to earn that TF2 drip. Those sweet virtual items whose price has a direct correlation with your skills in-game. Trading is the subject of this video, but not just any trading. Any TF2ber worth their weight in salt has done a basic trading guide already. What I'm going to be talking about today is the more unknown parts of TF2 trading, which have not been covered as extensively, especially in YouTube videos. I believe a huge part of trading, especially when starting out with almost nothing, is to find your niche strategies. It's hard to compete with others when starting out when you are doing the same methods as everyone else. Hopefully this video can give you some ideas as to how to do it. Feel free to skip to any part of the video with timestamps in the description. What's your money on your shoes? I mean, I walk to the money. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Money on my watch. Oh. I mean, time is money. Money on my phone, I mean I talk to the money. Indeed. Money on my chain, I mean the money hang with me. Oh, really? Money on my head, I mean yeah. money on my mind. I'm firstly going to be talking about cash and bulk trading. Do you ever notice those gargantuan huge TF2 traders that just buy bulk backpacks and keys using cash? Posting everywhere with their buying backpacks for money, cash out now, this, that, like damn. I get it. They usually purchase backpacks and large amounts of items for a certain discount using real money and then resell them. There is obviously a reason why they do these trading strategies and get rich. When many people are leaving the game, they want to cash out. Especially with long-term players, TF2 players have usually accumulated a certain value of an inventory by the time they are ready to leave. These bulk traders take advantage of this fact. Because people cashing out are deciding to leave the game indefinitely, or at least for a long time, they are more willing to take a smaller cut of what their inventory is really worth. I believe non-TF2 trader types of players are also thankful that they can get any money back from TF2 items at all, so cash traders buying their inventory for a percentage doesn't seem bad for them. You know, it makes sense. With reputable cash traders, selling your inventory for money is easy and safe. Sometimes they pay for the whole inventory and keys as well, which is why I believe big cash traders are also always buying keys. The seller of the inventory can sell the keys themselves for money, or maybe just needed the keys for another big purchase. For cash traders, there are many benefits to doing things this way. If you're buying a big pack back, even buying at a small percentage discount can be huge profits when reselling the items. And once you get the ball rolling with a couple trades, you can get a lot of rep or reputation with your network of customers expanding as you gain prestige in the community for being trustworthy. The most important benefit, I believe, is that this type of trading is easy and reliable. There are always people cashing out and it is a very straightforward way to make profit. Cash traders don't have to necessarily be big scale traders though. If you use manco.store or apply to marketplace.tf and get in, those cash trading websites are just another resource for you to use to buy, sell, and price items. You can use the Steam community market as well, but due to its uh, high fees and items bought from there being trade locked, I would recommend it against it. It can be decent for certain items, having more volume than in other places, so buying prices are cheaper, but the inverse is true about selling those items on the Steam community market. As a trader, Having as many resources as possible is great for finding what trading methods work for you and finding profit. A side note, some traditionally difficult to sell items, otherwise known as cancer items, are actually easier to sell through cash trade. For example, war paints and kill streaks, I would say are much easier to sell through cash than strictly through item trading. You can actually search for these items easily on cash sites as opposed to backpack.tf, so I believe more people buy them through these sites. There are some drawbacks to cash trading, however. It may be difficult to get into cash trading if you have no money or ways to pay with real money to begin with. Having a bank account, PayPal, Zelle, 
etc. is very beneficial. So most of these types of traders are at least 18 years old. You can operate using your parents' accounts possibly, but that's usually a hassle. Another route you could go is investing. Now, what do I mean by investing? Maybe some of y'all are like, what is that? They're not TF2 stocks or bonds or whatever. I mean buying items and holding them, hoping they increase in value to resell later. This is another method that is safe and reliable if you know what you're doing. The hardest part of investing in TF2 items is just picking which items to invest in. The two main components of what makes a TF2 item a good investment, in my opinion, is scarcity and popularity. For example, a common thing to invest in, which is very popular in CSGO, is cases. People will always be opening cases, and for cases that have no way of increasing a in number, fulfills both requirements of being scarce and popular. Looking at Salvage Manco Supply Crate 50, for example, the crate and the items in it have only gone up over time. Being a rare crate in the first place, and many people liking the strange items within the crate, it is a safe bet to invest in. Of course, there are better examples for people without $200 laying around on investing with other cases that do not drop anymore like the Invasion update cases. Just do your research, look at the price trends, and think about what would make an item increase in price over time and your goal then. Be warned though, all items usually fluctuate in value, but it's the consistent increases that you need to look for. Investing can apply to anything really, besides cases. Many old TF2 items only increase in value because it's hard or impossible to get more of them anymore. It's the same concept for old TF2 unusuals whose hats and effects are not being unboxed anymore. You just have to look around and find good items to buy and hold. A common method some traders are using nowadays is buying the expensive paints from the Manco store when they're discounted. The bitter taste of Defeat and Lime, Pink as Hell, and Distinctive Lack of Hue, which is the Lime, Pink, and Black paints. Yes. The man co-store whose contents are like 99% scams, these are some good deals that you can't get. Every year during Smithsmas, the paints are discounted to about half price and can reliably buy those paints and resell them for their normal value once the price has stabilized. Also, a small tip, you can list marketable items that you have invested in for an absurdly high price on the Steam community market so that nobody buys them, saving inventory space. This is especially useful for cases which often take up a lot of space in people's inventories. The key to investing is patience though, and usually the profit isn't quick. If you choose a good item, you just have to chill and keep them in your inventory long enough for the prices to rise. Most active traders should not consider this a quick source of profit. The next niche trading method is not really considered trading even. I'm talking about using the in-game crafting and trade-up system. I think crafting and trade-ups are underutilized strategies to profit in TF2, mostly because crafting, for the most part, is just used for combining weapon drops into metal, and trade-ups have a much bigger reputation in CSGO. But there are ways to get some good deals using both of these methods in TF2. Firstly, I have had success making killstreak kits Often I have found that the parts of the killstreak kit are worth less than the kit itself, which makes sense. I do want to note that this method works better through cash trading, because like I said earlier, it is difficult for you to sell killstreak items through backpack.tf and item trading, because people don't know how to search for them. The kits themselves are cheaper to craft, because TF2 players don't want to craft the kits themselves, so they just buy the kit straight up. To give an example, and this is going to be a long one, so buckle up. Here I can see that specialized killstreak pistol kits are selling for $349 on Marketplace TF. I look at the prices of a pistol specialized killstreak fabricator, which is one ref on STM trading or a couple cents on the Steam community market. Then I add the price of the parts specialized killstreak fabricators require. Because I've done it a couple of times, I know that each specialized killstreak kit, these 24 battle worn robot parts, 5 reinforced robot parts, and 1 unique killstreak item. With the battle worn parts being about 1.22 refined each, reinforced parts being about 2 scrap each, and the killstreak item being about 17 refined, the total comes out to about 48.44 refined. Divide that by the current refined per 1 key price, 64, 
you get about 0.76 keys as a result of crafting the kit. To find the selling price, you get the real dollar value of the kit, which is 349, and multiply it by 0.9 for the marketplace TF cut, and divide by the price of keys on marketplace, including tax, which is about $2.10. Doing that, we get around 1.5 keys as what you'd get out of selling the kit. That is around 0.7 keys profit for each kit. Even more if you find a cheaper key seller. Of course, this can apply to Mancota store as well if you do not have access to sell on Marketplace TF. Killstreak trading is very slept on, in my opinion. I'm guessing because people are just stuck on the notion that they are only doing item trading and they're difficult to sell. The thing is, people always mention how war paints and killstreaks are hard to sell. The huge variety of them and the difficult of finding them for some people is a gift and a curse. They are harder to sell, but when they do sell, you can set the price to a premium. The common mistake with selling these items is that people expect them to sell quickly and end up selling to people that don't really want it for a very discounted price. Secondly, trade-ups. Trade-ups, in case you weren't aware of what it is. Long story short, when you put 10 items of the same grade into a trade-up contract and get one item of the higher grade. You can use unique or strange graded items but cannot mix them together. You cannot use any items of other qualities like genuine or vintage at all. You cannot use items that have no higher grade item to trade up to within its collection. But you can mix war paints and cosmetics together, which is cool. Additionally, the chances of what item you get from what collection depends on which collection's items you put into the trade up. I will link resources about trade ups in the description if you want to learn more. You can probably see where the profit is to be made here. It may seem like gambling, which it is, but if you find some good contract fillers and calculate the outcomes, you can have favorable odds of profiting. For example, looking at the Mayflower Cosmetic case, the cheapest commando grade item is the Gauze Gaze, for about 8.66 refined each. If you purchase 10 of these, it will cost around 86.66 refined or about 1 key and 21.66 refined. Trading these up, you have a 50% chance of getting the Day Jogger and Dad Duds, which are the two assassin grade items in the collection. They are worth 1 key 24 refined and 1 key 29 refined respectively, giving you a guaranteed profit of 2 to 7 refined metal per trade up. Depending on how much pure you have currently, 2 to 7 ref profit may not be a lot to you, but it's guaranteed and easy. And the wider implication is, I'm sure, there are more opportunities out there for other trade-ups that are even more profitable with other collections. Personally, I've done some trade-ups using the lesser known cousin of trading up to higher grade items, which is stat clock crafting. If you craft 5 strange items or 5 freelance grade or higher items together, you can craft a civilian grade stat clock which makes non-strange civilian grade skins strange. A while ago, I would camp Scrap TF and STN Trading to get cheap freelance or mercenary grade war paints or skins. Specifically, any skin or war paint that is less than 3 refined. At this time, civilian grade stack clocks were about 20 refined, so I made about 5 refined per trade-up. This method doesn't work currently, because the price of civilian grade stack clocks are too low for it to be worth it, but the experience broadened my horizons within trading to look for lesser known methods. Also, did you know that there are some items whose default strange version is more expensive than their skin counterparts? Items like the Disciplinary Action and Holy Mackerel can be obtained cheaper in strange version by applying a strange war paint to the item instead of buying it outright. The final strategy I will be explaining is offering services and products for TF2 items. There are a lot of creative minds out there, and people are willing to pay for your skills. There are many people in the TF2 community willing to pay for commissions in traditional digital art or SFM art. If you are skilled in those areas and want some TF2 items, I would strongly encourage you to build a portfolio and see if you can get some commissions. People often advertise on TF2 Discord servers and other TF2 related communities. I do not have such skills, so I cannot speak much about the subject. 
If you have a copy of Poker Night at the inventory 1 or 2 on your Steam account, it is possible to earn a quick buck sharing the game for the TF2 achievement items. Since the games are no longer on the Steam store and haven't been on it for a while, the game keys are very expensive. So some people out there are running a service by family sharing the game so that anyone who gives them a couple keys can get the widely sought after achievement items. You can keep doing it until a certain limit, but the limit resets after a certain amount of time, I believe. This process is kind of complicated though, and it does require you to have the games in the first place. There are even entrepreneurial folks out there offering to make colored conscientious objectives where the image is in full color instead of that dull palette TF2 default to on decal tools. Which I don't know how this works because there are so many tutorials on how to do this on YouTube, but yeah. I mean, if it works, it works. The point is there are a lot of possibilities to run a service. By this time, I'm getting into pretty obscure methods of obtaining TF2 items that even I have little experience in, so I will discontinue speaking about it. Now, if there is one thing that you take away from this video, it should be find your own niche, like I said earlier. Join giveaways, look for auction deals, be a war paint dealer, grind the TF2 comp scene until you're banny, and then win the insane prize pools TF2 comp has to offer. Shit, you can even play CSGO if you got Prime and get 50 cents each week for free using case drops or something. That's like 15 refined. Find something that works for you. There are a lot of options out there, and although it may not be easy at first, persist, be patient, and I believe anyone can succeed. Stop. And finally, remember, getting a job in real life is always faster than trading anyways. I can't say it'll be as fun, but, you know, it's always an option. Thank you for watching.